right, guys, uh, welcome to, um, formally welcome, I'm sure you've seen a bit of uh, preamble and a bit of chat from us all beforehand, but welcome to the latest in the Harlequins Foundation uh, series of An Evening With. Uh, our guests this week are Stefan Lovies, Caden Murley and James Chisholm um, in the world of Zoom um, meetings. I'm never sure whether at this point I just do a round of applause just for them, just myself, because you guys can't, can't contribute, but I know you're all clapping um, at home. I say before we get on to the really meaty stuff, there has been a very, very important question um, sent in because we did witness, for those of you that were on the call early, um, Caden's resident chef um, and sometimes uh, Quinn's fly half, Marcus Smith, dropped some chicken wings off. Um, and Caden, we all want to know how good a cook is Marcus. He's got a very specific type of dish. He loves his rice. So he's, got an, he's actually got a rice maker. So he makes nice, fluffy little jasmine rice dish. Usually curries, usually Asian Asian style dishes from his mum. Yeah, he's very good at them, but doesn't stray much further than that. I tend to take everything else. Oh, fine. So you're you're teaching him the ropes for things outside of the rice yeah, maker. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Nice. No, good. It's good to give back. It's good to give back. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, but as you probably heard me say. Um, uh, this evening we'll follow. Um, kind of, we'll get a bit of an insight from the guys as to what it's been like um, coming back to the club after that weird enforced layoff um, that we've all been on. I say it's, it's lovely to, to, see, to see the guys and have a chat with them, but um, no uh, comparison for, for being there and, and seeing them tear it up in the flesh. Um, without doing too much of, of an intro, Stefan moves over here from South Africa. Um, it's still yet to finish his, his first season in the Prem, which I think sets, sets new records. Um, but he has at least turned Guzzi into a massive South African lover uh, because ever since Stefan's arrived, that's it. Every new signing has to at least at one point have played with Stefan in the past. Um, Caden's part of a really exciting crop of youngsters who not only um, play well together, but also apparently live together um, and cook together, which is, is just lovely to see. Um, and then James Chisholm has taken some time off from being uh, South West London's premier Sean Dyche lookalike uh, to focus on a promising career in rugby. Um, and I think he's doing all right so far. Um, back-to-back uh, player of the season winners uh, for a couple of years before letting Alex Don Brandt have a go, which I thought was, was very, very generous of you, Chiz. Um, so I guess to, to start with, boys, um, lockdown. I know what I spent my time in lockdown doing, and it was basically eating ice cream um, and trying out how many different breweries could deliver to Hampton Wick. And good news, it's most of them. Um, what, what's it been like for you guys? Uh, Caden, come to you first. Um, aside from Marcus's cooking, um, what did you f- kind of fill your time with? Was it difficult to kind of keep on track with, with fitness and, and rugby when it's, it was so far removed? I actually found it was the opposite. I found it was, you actually have so much time, you actually want to be doing something. You want to be doing some form of exercise, getting out of the house going on runs. Um, luckily, uh, I had a home gym back home, so my dad delivered a load of weights just as lockdown started, so I had all of them. Um, Marcus actually went home to Brighton, so I was all by myself in his house looking after it. He called me the caretaker over those times. I looked after everything, any problems, I had to go fix them. And Yeah, I actually didn't, didn't mind it. I focused on myself quite a lot and enjoyed it. Nice. And, and what, about, what about you, Chiz? Yeah, same, to be honest. I... Um... It, it wasn't that hard to sort of park rugby and just set new sort of goals, everyone being fairly competitive and, and enjoying their activity of, of whatever it is. I live with my brother, Ali, so we could be competitive, train together. So I still had that in my life. Um, and it was a good time just to rest up, focus on ourselves and, and kind of get our bodies right and, and have a bit of freedom when it came to training. We don't get a great deal of freedom. because There's a lot of stuff we have to do. Um, but you know, it's, it's not often in the rugby season you can get on your bike and go out twice a week, three times a week, which I really enjoyed. Um, and then towards the end, when when sort of the end was nigh, it was it was nice to have something to plan for. And now we're into it; it's been great. And that's an interesting point, actually, because I guess you guys typically you exist in the season, then you have an off season, then just straight into pre-season, and then the season starts again, and that's kind of totally your life all the time and so actually having a, an enforced break was probably quite good mentally to just to get out there and try different things yeah definitely I think a lot of people really benefited from coming away from rugby but not have it kind of hanging over you of like in two weeks you've got to do a fitness test or so on and, and so forth um, it was nice to be like okay guys you've got you know four weeks minimum which turned into three months but you got four weeks minimum and I think guys took it pretty seriously because they wanted to come back in good shape and hit the ground running, but also um, had time to chill out and, and rest their rest their minds. And you're not watching your games and doing your previews and reviews, which is actually quite important sometimes just to escape it. Um, and that's not to say, you know, we're all very excited to be back and we're all really enjoying it, but it is important. 
Yeah, for sure. And, and Steph, what about you? Because obviously moved over to the UK this year for the first time and kind of settling into that way of life. And then halfway through a season, suddenly everything goes goes on hold. What, what, what did you spend your time? Did you get back to South Africa at all? Or did you stay over here? Yeah, I actually went back to South Africa after a few weeks in lockdown over here. So kind of tried to get into South Africa before they locked the borders. I just saw it as a massive opportunity to do self-improvement. Um, not necessarily in rugby, but just like um, yeah, outside rugby, try and plan for life after rugby a little bit. And then I was lucky enough in South Africa to be on the farm. So <clears throat> yeah, I wake up every day and there's stuff to do. So yeah, worked quite hard on the farm actually, but really enjoyed it. Uh, came back refreshed and quite keen to to play rugby again. I think sometimes when the season gets long, you get into a thing where you take everything for granted, your teammates and your mates. So there's quite a good buzz and a vibe back with the team now. I think everyone's just so happy to to be with their teammates and yeah, it's been class. I think that's what's quite exciting to hear, certainly as a obviously as a, as a Quinns employee, but also as a as a fan that actually you guys as much as you enjoyed having that time on your own, that actually it was exciting to get back in and there's that real sense of camaraderie and that that you all wanted to go kind of get back in there for each other and work hard for each other, even when you're away from the club that no one wanted to let anyone else down. Would that be kind of fair to say, Seth? Yeah, definitely. Um, I think for it also shows you what you're going to miss a life after rugby in a way. Um, but yeah, it's just great being back with your mates, seeing your mates every day. I think we're in a very fortunate position where your work, if you can call it work, but um, your work is to be with your mates every day and, and to get better with them so and grow with them as well. Nice. No, cool. Um, but I should also just say a bit of bit of housekeeping for everyone. Please do um, keep the questions coming in on the chat to us. Um, I'll see them. I'll put them to the guys. Um, we'll do a bit at the end where you can send questions in, but if you keep them coming in the whole way through, I'm happy to kind of put them to the guys when the, when, when the time is right. Um, there's one on uh, player signings that's, that's just come in, which um, I'm not sure if any of you guys happen to be doubling up as head of recruitment as well. But if uh, you let me know if you are also in charge of that, I'll know who to field that one to in a minute. Um, I guess the, the other side of it is, as well as kind of having that time off and using that time to kind of reset, you then came straight back into what was essentially pre-season in the middle of a season. Um, Caden, can I come to you? Like, yeah. It would be a bit of a different pre-season because when you first came back, it was just running and wait. Am I right? There were no coaches kind of on site, like giving you rugby drills to do. It was just kind of focused on fitness. Yeah, it was just the S&C coaches there. So we were, it was very weird. We had to drive up to the pitches all individually, no sharing cars, get up to the pitch, obviously keep socially distanced, which some boys I know found hard because they're very touchy-feely. So, um, yeah. Well, you can name names there. Who's, who's touchy-feely? That's what we want to know. There's, there's one in this chat and he's looking down at the moment in a red top. <laughs> he's very touchy-feely. Um, James Lang. James Lang loves a cuddle. So he, he needed a bit of help. Um, but yeah, it was really good. Um, really well set up, but it was strange just running five metres apart from your mate and not even been able to talk to them from a close distance. No, that's, that's really surreal, actually, because I think we've all kind of had that adjusting to that in our social lives. When you see people and even going back to the pubs and stuff now, you, you kind of take it for granted because you sit opposite each other at a table and you're outside or whatever. But actually when you're working out and working hard, like running up and down next to each other, but not being able to have a chat face to face that must be must be slightly surreal James who, who was it that you had your hardest time keeping your hands off <laughs> oh, sorry Matt I didn't hear your question because Nikki's offering us brownies oh I, well, I missed I that as well and Nikki I would love some brownies yes. and Terry yeah. it's lovely to lovely to hear from you as well Joe what was your question <laughs> I don't know now I'm distracted about the brownies Nikki absolutely yeah, I, need to, um, I need to know more about these brownies <laughs> yeah I think we're gonna have a, we're gonna have a pivot here to, to a different yeah. brownie chat so we, may, we, we keep that one on the side the question was, um, again, how did you find kind of getting back in and kind of keeping socially distant and slightly tongue-in-cheek, who was the player you found it hardest to keep your hands off? <laughs> yeah. The thing is, you turn up and you want to hug everyone. You haven't seen them in four, three, four months. And some guys just, they just get carried away. Um, I, was, I thought I was actually quite good. You've got to tell people. I remember Nathan was trying to show me something on his phone. And I was like, mate, get away from me. Stop coming so, clo <laughs> stop coming so close to me. And he's like, oh, yeah, 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 oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. He's just like, leave me alone. Um, but it was good. Like I said, it was because it had been such a long time. And like I said, I re did really enjoy my own training. It was great to get back, see all your mates, um, have a little bit of structure to your life. 
Um, it was a bit strange, like Caden said, driving up the top and not being allowed to do certain things. Cleaning, we're still cleaning all the gym kit stuff after we use it, which is obviously a bit odd. Um, but it was great to be back. It was great to see everyone. And it, it just forced everyone to be quite creative. Um, we had to run our own sessions, skill sessions, forces you to take responsibility for you and about six other blokes um, and be creative. So have, have quite a lot of fun while still trying to improve, which was great. Yeah, it kind of pushes you guys out of your comfort zone because I guess most of the time it's so directive, like the coaches are really prescriptive in terms of what you're doing and actually you've got to keep it interesting for each other and got to kind of work hard, I guess, to actually make it make it enjoyable as well because it, otherwise it's just running up and down in straight lines all day. 100%, yeah. And in, in my groups, um, it changed every day. So, you know, you'd have Danny Kerr running a session and then Sam Riley ran one. So it sort of changed hands and there's different themes. Um, and it's good to just get guys talking and coaching. Um, not not that everybody should coach and talk, but it, it just puts you some people in an uncomfortable situation, and that's good for for grow for growth, I think, both in rugby and in life. No, for sure. And, and and Steph, kind of, we've heard from the other guys about what it was like, kind of getting back into training. Good to see, good to see your mates again. Obviously, your first season um, at the club, and kind of over lockdown, there were a lot of new signings that, that were announced. I joked about the South Africans that Guzzi's clearly got a taste for um, now. I heard from Andre, did an event with him recently, before, what's with him still over in South Africa, saying that um, he probably owes you a commission for his signings. I think you put in a good word uh, for him, if I'm, if I'm not mistaken. But what's it been like getting back to obviously see your mates and see those guys, but also, I know we haven't had the guys over from South Africa yet, but seeing a host of new faces as well and kind of integrating them into the group in, a, in that kind of weird, sort of slightly sanitised way. Yeah, well, first of all, I don't think Andre owns me anything. Um, I think, yeah, his playing ability got him, yeah. But I'm very happy for him to be joining. The class playing with him again. We actually used to be um, housemates back in Durban. No so, way. Yeah, yeah, so we're classing him back, yeah. Um, yeah, it's exciting to see some of the South African boys coming over. I think it's all really good players. And I think they'll all add a lot of value to the team and yeah, to the club going forward. Um, it's always good. I think all the new, there's quite a few new players already has joined us from all over and it's just great. They bring a new energy to the group, new personalities. So, yeah, I've always enjoyed meeting new people and I think for most of us, it's, yeah, it's nice to having new people over and new players bringing something different to, to the table. Nice. And uh, just acted while you're, while you're answering there, Steph, on, on Jane's point here which is can we get the guys into gallery view please I think they want to see some reactions from the other guys to work out whether people's answers are true or not so uh, they're now all on camera um, all the time so there's nowhere there's nowhere to hide and, and this, this is an interesting one that I'll put to who should we go to first on this one we'll go to you Caden on this and let's say excluding present company uh, on the call I think what we really want to know is who came back in the best shape after lockdown and kind of their self-motivation and who came back in the worst shape after lockdown um I think I'll go with the worst first. I think that was quite easy. Um, he, uh, a liar, a liar. Uh, he, I think he enjoyed his time back home. Um, enjoyed all the all the food back in New Zealand. Who came back in the best shape? Um, I think Marcus actually ran the best bron Bronco in the backs. He was very self-motivated back in Brighton, on the beach, doing runs down there. Um, Ashley's always in really good nick. He was did some fitness of him and hardly kept up with him. So, yeah, I'd say Marcus and Ashley in the back. So, I didn't really mix with the forwards because, obviously, we're in separate groups. Okay. Who, who's going to field the forwards? Steph or, Steph or you, James? No, uh, James. <laughs> <laughs> I was there first. He was stuck in on the farm. Um, Archie White was, was very, very fit. He really impressed me. He, um, he'd done a lot. He'd read, he'd read like a self-help book. So he was up at like 8 a.m. every day, regardless, doing, it, doing work in the morning and then training in the afternoon. So he came back really, really fit. Um, he's the one that stood out for me. Nice. See, I think it's interesting for all of us to hear that forwards can read as well. That's promising <laughs> for the future of the game. <laughs> I've just got audio, audio books, so not all of us. Yeah. <laughs> still counts it still counts um and then i guess the other guy that's the, the the kind of the new face and i was without making too many people jealous uh, was one of the lucky people that was uh, doubled up and working at the stoop for for the match on friday and one of the things that struck me was one ashy didn't shut up for the entire game um he was constantly talking but the other guy that was constantly talking was jerry flannery on the sidelines i 
had a chat with him and after 20 minutes of chatting with him uh, a few weeks before uh, or just after he started at, at the club I was convinced that I was ready to play in the second row I was like yeah sure I'll do it I'll do a job mate whatever you say I will I will do it what's he been like to work with um Steph for, for you guys at, at the set piece with, with the line in particular yeah I've really enjoyed him I think he's brought in a new energy into the team um he's a yeah he's a really hard worker he's quite I won't say hard on the players but he's like you know what he, he he wants, and he he like everyone knows what he expects from us. So he drives standards, and he oh, he keeps pushing us, which I think we need, and um, I think we'll see we'll see um, some results from his coaching going forward. But yeah, he's very passionate, and I love it about him. Nice, and and some, some nodding from both of you there. I've seen like less less exposed to it with the, with the lineout stuff, um, uh, Caden. But is that kind of your impression that you've got from him just around the training ground that he, he means business when he turned up? Yeah, massively. He's very, he's a very intense human being. As soon as he looks at you, you've got to be switched on, and it yeah, like Steph said, it really drives you to want to almost be the player he wants you to be, which is passionate, hardworking, um, and physical. He's brought that in from Munster. Oh, we saw it on the weekend with the pack. They're unbelievable, unbelievably physical against sales mass with all their big boys. So credit to him, credit to the forwards. They were class. And actually, cheers on that. Like, yes, I'd say that we all, everyone on this call will have watched the game on, on BT Sport and, and seen it. That looked like a real physical battle on Friday night. That looked, that looked full on. Was that, what, was that what it was like kind of between the white lines on the pitch? Yeah, I think I think when when you watch it back as well, it was a little bit. It was quite a slow game. It, it kind of seemed uneventful watching it back. But when you're in it, like there's when you're up close to those guys, they're so big, and some of them are, are like very very physical. Um, but like like Caden said, we dealt with the mall and their carrying threats really really well. Um, and and like a lot of these teams now, there's some massive blokes in there. And you've got to be at your best every week and you've got to be at your most physical every week. And, and I think Jerry's really given the guys confidence that we are physical and we can do, we can do a job. We, have, we, shouldn't, we shouldn't shy away from it, but we should get excited about being good at it, which has been great, which has been really empowering for the group. No, that's, um, that's a really interesting thing to hear, actually, that, kind of, that, that just that change in in voice as well and that changing kind of mentality that he's trying to bring um, with him. And, and Steph, uh, kind of on to, on to Friday's game, um, a great win, a really, really good performance. But is that still a 100% record for you playing matches in the rain at the Stoop? I couldn't believe it. It was sunny like all week before and then on the day it started raining. Like you must, you must never believe us that we actually play competitive rugby in the sun. So on, in the week leading up, we are at an interview and they're like, yo, you must be looking forward to playing rugby in the sun in the summer weather, what do you think it's going to be like? I'm like, don't speak too early. It's still, it's still chance of rain. And what happened? It rained. So, but yeah, well, we used to it at least playing in the rain. So it doesn't really make, make a difference. And, and how did you find it out there? Because like similar to, to James, it probably maybe was not one that you initially think there were loads of highlights in, but um, they've obviously got a lot of South Africans as well. So you probably know sort of what to expect from, from the style, but it looked a really kind of, attritional game particularly in the forwards yeah I think for the forwards it was a different game to, compared to the backs we had to work quite hard stopping malls and mauling ourselves so like James said it was quite a stop start but you still got quite tired doing all the the dirty work if you could put it that way um, but I think we pl we spoke about it today like at half time you didn't hear a lot of sale voices anymore so I think yeah. we did really well to to stop their momentum early on and they kind of lost energy in a way, and we just kept going. So I think, yeah, we can just we can only bowl on that performance. No, for sure. And I think another huge positive that comes from it is that there were no, aside from the expected wear and tear of a, of a competitive game of rugby, there were no injuries that came out of it either, which means that we kind of go into this grueling period of whatever it is, like eight, nine games in, in ridiculously short amounts of time um, with a full squad. And Caden, I guess, I'd kind of come to you on this one. We heard at times, like particularly in that first half of, of this season, we were so affected by injuries that literally it was one thing to get a 15 out on a Saturday, but it was even harder to train when you couldn't have a 15 against 15 game in a week to just kind of get the, the fitness levels up for the, for the boys. Is that a real marked difference on this side of lockdown, like having that full avail availability of the squad? 
Yeah, and I think it just shows some boys probably did need a rest and that's what lockdown did. It gave them that chance to rest and recover. And as we said, boys were professional. They still kept on top of that fitness, but it gave their bodies time to recover, to heal, because it is all these competitions, they are grueling and you're playing week in, week out against big physical teams, the likes of Sale, the likes of Leicester. So this lockdown really helped some of the boys to recover. And I think it shows, it's a testament to every, all the players to show how professional they were to come back in fully fit, to get through this first game with no injuries. It shows they were completely ready. And yeah, looking forward to the next few games ahead. And you mentioned him earlier, Caden, I'm just going to pick up on something you said about um, Chris Ashton in terms of the fitness that, that he brings. But as, a, as an experienced winger and just really prolific try scorer, I imagine for, for you, having someone like that in the squad is just absolutely invaluable to be able to, to pick his brains and, and be in his ear. Is that kind of how you view a signing like that when he comes into the team? Like, yeah, 100, 100, to learn from? yeah, 100%. Yeah, um, 100%. I love a challenge, so I, but I, I want to be the best. So I look at him and the amount of tries he scored, he's always on the end of the ball, on the end of a play, which is something I need to improve on. So, yeah, racking his brains. Even just watching him in training, he never switches off. So learning from him, running behind him quite a lot of the times in the fitness, trying to catch him up has really helped me personally nice um and and james kind of to, to come to you on um yeah after coming off the back of a win against sale a really vital win when it's so congested in the middle of that premiership obviously there's no extra motivation needed when you're going away to saracens we joked and said you know going to play a, a championship side you know midway through a season it's almost like a nice pre-season warm-up game for us right um but their squad will be very very different to that game we played at the stoop um, earlier on in, in the year as they've kind of got almost a full host of all of their big names back playing. It must be an exciting game for, for the squad to want to test themselves in uh, as well on, on Sunday. Yeah, I think there's no... It's, it's a weird one because a lot of guys have been there for a long time and understand sort of the magnitude of the game in terms of the derby and there's a lot of guys that haven't been at Quinns very long or there's a few foreign boys that maybe don't understand it, but you don't have to be at the club for that long to soak that up and see how big of a deal this is, especially the last game, how pumped everyone was. And I think, you know, there was a lot of people maybe said in the, the media and stuff that the last game they had a very weak team or, or, or whatever it was. And it's like, they still had a really good team. They still had Callum Clark, Jackson Ray, um, Vincent Cock, Jack Singleton, guys who have played international rugby and a lot of premiership games. Um, but now, like you said, you throw in Marrow and the Vinopolas and, you know, God knows who else. And I think it just brings more excitement to the game. You want to play against the best players in the league every weekend and we've got a chance to play some of the best players in the world. Um, so that sort of motivation is, is, is even more so with that incentive. Um, and it's been a long time since we've played at Allianz in the Premiership. So I think, again, guys are probably excited to, to do that as well and, and see what we can produce. No, for sure. that's a really good point, actually, about playing at Allianz in, in the Prem, because, of course, usually that's their... Um, yeah, their big one. Their, their, their botched attempt at a big game. I mean, look, everyone tries it, you know, whatever. Im imitation is a serious form of flattery, that's what they say, don't they? Um, <laughs> but actually, yeah, going and playing on that, on that 4G surface, it's a very different challenge. Um, Steph, is that something that you're kind of mindful of with, with the forward with the forward pack? It's going to be a different challenge to just in terms of the, the conditions in playing on that surface rather than playing on the grass. Yeah, I've actually played there in 2014. We played there with the Sharks against them. So I've played there before. And when I was playing in Japan, our home pitch was a 4G pitch as well. So I'm quite used to playing on it. I won't say I like it, but I'm used to playing on it. Um, and yeah, just Saracens as a team is obviously a different beast. Um, I think they'll be at their best, so we need to be at our best. But like you said, it's a challenge that we're excited about and, and it's good to measure yourself against the best. That's ultimately why you play. So, yeah, it'll be, be a good day out, day out um, see what we have in us. Nice. No, exciting. Can't wait, can't wait for that one uh, on the box on the weekend. Um, and, Caden, just quickly to you before, uh, there's some good questions that are coming in and I'm conscious that... that People are clearly angling for my job because there's some better questions than I prepared here. So we'll do one last one from me for a while and then we'll, we'll start taking the questions that people are, are sending in. But just quickly, um, for you, like this challenge of having so many games in such a short period of time, having a fully fit <laughs> squad, could, I guess, be daunting for, for all players in terms of, oh, wow, 
going to have to really fight for my place, which obviously you said you're up for a challenge yourself and that's part of the excitement. But also is it exciting knowing that with the grueling schedule, kind of everyone in the squad is probably going to get their chance to play because we're going to need to use that that whole squad. That actually that's an extra excitement that, that everyone, that, that's the real buzz around, not just for you, but for the whole group that everyone knows that they'll get their chance in the shirt to kind of make the shirt their own. Yeah, and I think that's why these last few weeks of training have been really intense. I think boys know that the squad is going to have to get rotated because of these new PRL rules in place. But yeah. they've been training extra hard to try and put their name on that team sheet firstly and secondly challenge the boys who would usually be the starters per se. So, um, yeah, it's been really competitive, really good. Um, boys are really looking forward to, everyone is looking forward to getting out there and just playing over these next eight weeks. Obviously, we've missed rugby for those, these past five months. No, for, sh- for sure, for sure. Right, now it's time to take some questions from some people that have sent them in because there's some, there's some good stuff in here. And uh, I know that you guys have probably seen a few of them as they come in as well, but I'm going to start with this one from Karen because this is a question that's, that's close to my heart as uh, on one Zoom call a couple of weeks ago, someone asked if I was doing a Claire Balding impression, which I did not take to. Um, that, that, no, you don't laugh at that. It's not that funny. That is well I don't funny. Know, don't look at it. Not if I push it back and tuck this behind my ear, it's fine. Um, but the barbers have reopened now. But when you guys first came back in to training, we really want to know who had the worst lid, who had the worst hairstyle when they came back there in. There were some bad ones, didn't there? Yeah. I think Glenn Young's was bad, but it looks okay now because he's cut it. He's like trimmed it down there. It looks way better. Slim Shady. Slim Shady, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Did he bleach it? He bleached it, didn't he? Yeah, yeah he bleached it, yeah. Oh dear, that's not great. I mean, that's... And he had no excuses. What his missus is a hairdresser. He had no excuse not to trim it down. <laughs> that's shocking. It, does, I mean, that... it looks better now. <laughs> and anyone else that kind of springs to mind in there that had an absolute shocker? Mm, there were some Will long Evans. ones. Will Evans huh? just did the sides himself because he couldn't see the back. So <laughs> yeah. he just completely shaved this part of his hair. And that was quite amusing. Yeah. Him telling the story of him doing it in the mirror. Um, yeah, There's quite a lot of length, wasn't there? There's was quite a few yeah. Alice bands out on show. Yeah, Danny and Marcus, yeah. Yeah. Which is a nice Yeah. <laughs> Loving it. Not, not even ashamed either of the pair of them, I bet, with that. Fully embraced it. Nice. Uh, Nikki has come back to say that uh, there's brownies on their way to SSP. Um, so, not really a question, but just I know that that's. I mean, that's going to get the biggest reaction of the, that's the, good the, news reaction of the evening. We were all hoping for. Yeah. <laughs> and then this is a very good question. I know it's, it's always, as, as a Quinn's employee, hands down, the best day of the season is new stash day. When you get in in the morning and you get told the new kit is, 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 is in the office for you. And bear in mind, all we get is, is a polo shirt and a T-shirt. But it's still exciting because it, it's new Adidas stash. And I think that my whole family... I've been at Quinns for five years now. My whole family all walk the dog in matching Quinns big coats now at Christmas time, which is nice. Um, but firstly, for you guys, this may sound like a daft question, but how good is, is the new stash? And does it matter to you when you see it? Does it? Do you kind of like, oh yeah, I like that. That's nice. And um, then there's a follow-up question to that, but I think we just quickly go for the, go for the stash question um, first. Is, is, is new stash day as exciting for professional rugby players as it is for cheapskates like me? Definitely. It feels like Christmas. Early Christmas to me. I love it. I don't know about the other boys. Yeah, I do love it as well. It's good stuff. Like the Adidas stuff real good stuff. Yeah, it's nice. it's, it is really, really nice stuff. Um, and then on, on the serious rugby question um, here, and this is a good one, I think, um, particularly casting your minds back to pre-lockdown, which at some point, I mean, watching the Tiger King feels like it was a different lifetime, let alone life before lockdown. Um, which game this season were you most pleased with um, kind of from a, a, maybe a personal performance level, and is there one that still sticks in your memory as one that you'd love to be able to go and have another go at and, uh, and replay it because something went wrong? Um, it's a difficult one to, to think on, but uh, but Caden, why don't I come to you first on that for you? If there's a game that kind of sticks in your memory as, as one you'd love to have another go at, or one you thought, oh yeah, that was I was flying in that one. Um, I think one of the best games for me was the Clermont at home. I think because what had happened previously, I think everyone wrote us off. We sent out quite a young team. We had academy hooker Jack Musk. We had a lot of academy players in there, a lot of youngsters getting their first, second starts. But we really put performance against their team full of internationals. And I think we almost, we didn't, we almost surprised ourselves at how well we played. 
because everyone had written us off. Everyone said, Clam want to buy 50, etc. They didn't put some of their players on the plane when they saw our squad. But I think the fact that we went out there and put a good performance, I know we lost, but as a team, I think that really gelled some of the young boys and that really showed us that we can do it. So on that note, I'm going to say that game and probably the other one would be Clamont away, one that I'd like to go and play again. Um, I think we just got it completely wrong and they were class to be fair to them, but I'd love to have a go back at that stadium again and put it, put things right. Yeah, that stadium is one, is one of those stadiums that certainly as most supporters, it's on their, on their bucket list to go to because it's the atmosphere is something else. And I imagine playing in that atmosphere, obviously the game didn't go the way we wanted. That is an experience that is not really replicated week in, week out, right? No, definitely not. It's, it's an unbelievable stadium and an awesome away day. Unfortunately, the result was, we weren't good that day. We, we held our hands up and we put a fight the second time round. But yeah, I'd love to go and do that again. Nice, nice. And Steph, what about you? Are there any games that kind of stand out for you? I really enjoyed the Wasp game away. I think it was also like their Christmas game or whatever. I think we put a good performance together. And I, yeah, it's just a game I really enjoyed. Um, and then the one I'd like to go back to is Ulster away. I think we really played well and we lost it at the end. And I almost felt like we deserved to win that game. Um, so, yeah, if we could have another chance to go back there and beat them there, that would be class. But that's maybe it. Yeah, I think that's my two games. Nice. And Chiz, what about you? Yeah, I'm trying to think. The first one that came into my head, that Chiefs one, where we scrummed them to death. That was, that was awesome. We put so much effort yeah. in for about 10 extra minutes and then got there in the end. That would probably be my number one. Saracens at home, number two, probably. Um, and the one I'd like to have a go, I, I didn't play in the Clermont one, but I would have loved to have gone. I've missed Clermont three times and I've missed Ulster away two times. Um, but I'd love to have gone to Clermont and have a go. Because um, like Caden said, they've got such an amazing team. You want to play in those games and throw in the stadium and the atmosphere and the competition. No, I was gutted I missed that. In that case, I take back what I said earlier. It's not on people's bucket list. It's a rubbish stadium. You'd hate it, mate. I mean, don't, don't worry about it. Just, yeah, gloss, o gloss over that one. <laughs> no, nice. That's re really good insight, actually, guys. I think it's one of those things that, certainly as fans, there's so many games that you watch and you think, oh, I'd love to be able to go back, watch that again, and, and, and the result go a different way. It's interesting to hear that players, even being put on the spot, there's a few that stick out. You're like, oh, yeah, I'd have loved to have had another, another bite at that one, um, another go at that one. Um, there's a question here about, about Jack Clifford, but conscious that's going to, there's quite a lot to discuss on that in terms of him. So I think we'll come back to that one, um, if that's all right. Uh, kind of going on the, on the same sort of theme about what, what do you prefer? This is a good one, actually. Um, and Burge, I think it is, um, so far is sending in much better questions than I wrote myself. So I think for the next foundation evening with, there's a chance that you may be on the, maybe on the call up list and I'll be sat on the, uh, on the game changers bench. Um, but a quick one to kind of just almost quick fire, but not, not too quick fire for you guys. 3 p.m. on Saturday or 7.45 p.m. under the nights on a Friday. Um, which ones do you prefer? Friday. Yeah, Friday night lights. Definitely. Stoop, always. Yeah. Friday Top. night lights. Not even a contest. No. Short week and you have a weekend. <laughs> That's, the, the, obviously, the atmosphere is great, but also nice to have a line on Saturday morning. So it, it kind of it, it ticks both boxes um, on that one. Um, and this is a, a, an interesting one. I'll come to you, Stefan, as um, Andre's uh, S1000's unofficial agent um, and conduit between Harlequins and, and South Africa, our official ambassador. Um, there's obviously lots of talk, and I know we all want to see them soon, but have you heard from the guys? And do you know when, when the South African boys um, are arriving and, and, and kind of integrating into the group? Have you heard from them yet? I know Volko and Andre got their visas this week. They've been, they missed their flight last week because they um, didn't get their visas in time. So, but they're all on a flight this weekend and they should be arriving yeah, Sunday and Monday. Oh, wow. Cool. That's going to be exciting to kind of throw them into the mix, um, into the, with, with the group of you kind of chatting with them. How, how are they feeling fitness-wise? They, they must be raring to go because they've had a long old break, haven't they, after finishing rugby out there? Yeah, I think they had a yeah, massive break, like you said, but also in the beginning of lockdown in South Africa, you weren't allowed to go out of your, your house or your yard, so you couldn't really do that much training or running. Wilco was lucky he was on the farm as well. So I think he did a fair bit. 
think Andre might need a week or two of fitness before he goes to the pitch. He's massive though, but um, yeah, he's an athlete. I think he would be all right. And they have, I think they're going into quarantine or whatever you call it for two weeks when they arrive. Or at least, so that give him a good chance to to do some fitness. <laughs> That's, it's, it's quarantine it's serving two purposes there it's keeping us safe from covid and it's helping him shed uh, the built on um <laughs> and Caden, cheers for you guys like i know we've joked a bit about about the south africans coming over but that must be quite exciting like one thing to get a different voice in terms of a different style of rugby with jerry flannery coming in and what he's bringing from from munster but but as with as with steph and you know you see it in the sale team like i'm gonna say it fine steph i'll say it it's the country that just won the World Cup, okay? They're, they're, they're world <laughs> champions uh, for a reason. Um, he, he fought me and made me say that at the start. Um, but that must be exciting, having kind of players coming over with that pedigree from that from that kind of rugby culture to kind of fit into the group at, at Quinns. Kate, how are you feeling about those guys coming over and kind of being a part of the group? Yeah, definitely. Um, they brought in and they've all got that mindset to really challenge you. Um, Steph, Steph probably is the leader in that and he's always on the training pitch. He's always the one like, lifting the boys, bringing the energy. Um, and I think they've all bought into that and it's been great having them over. Nice. And, and, and cheers, sim- similar sort of thing for you? Yeah, I just think um, those guys, like those, especially the, the guys that have played for South Africa, hang their, hat on, hang their hat on being incredibly physical. And you want to play with guys like that. You want to play with guys you can depend on. Um, the likes of Steph, that you know he's going to pitch up and do his bit. And, and hit things as hard as he can. And we're expecting Andre and um, Wilco to do the same. I don't know much about Tyrone, um, but Steph talks very highly of him. So I expect the same from those guys. They're incredibly honest professionals, which is very helpful as well, especially in, in kind of a culture where we, we shy away from confrontation sometimes. It's taken us a long time to be able to speak to one another. Um, and, we, and those guys, it's just there to aid that, which is great. And I think, especially with Jerry coming in, everything sounds better with an accent. <laughs> I've, got to, I've got to move abroad and pick one up somehow because it's everything. <laughs> that's that, that's the tip. That's if, if we know if we're doing one of. Hopefully, we're not doing Zoom calls at this point next season. But next time you're, you're doing the rounds on a on a match day, I want to hear you talking in an accent. I think you've got to throw one, one in there. Have you got got any in your locker? Just going to speak a little one. bit of Afrikaans though. Yeah, I learned some words. I learned lots of <laughs> naughty words, but... Um, What's good to I know told... is, is, that, is that essentially boys never grow up because when you learn a new language, even if you're 11 years old, you're like, what are the swear words? That's, yeah, straight give me those ones straight first. In the, like, straight, straight, in. In the, straight in the dictionary to find out what's the worst word you can find. I'm not going to ask you for that in, in Afrikaans uh, on here. Do, <laughs> do, you know, do, do you know any... I think we, we are still pre-watershed. Do you know any pre-watershed language in Afrikaans? Yeah, I can say how are you and stuff, and I can understand if they say good, but good sounds <laughs> good sounds like what we say. It's with a H. <laughs> that's that's. I think that's the important thing. You need to know how are you, and to understand when they respond good, because that's all they're going to say. That's what, exactly. what else they, And as long as you you know what the bride's a barbecue, then life is good. That's yeah. that's that's the most important bit of translation. The thing uh, to say in Afrikaans is is thank you very much, because it's it sounds like buy a donkey. Because it's buy a donkey, yeah. but buy a donkey, you'll get away with it. <laughs> <laughs> so it's all, it works if you also want to purchase um, livestock as well. You can buy a donkey yeah. and thank them for it afterwards. <laughs> Lovely. <laughs> work, every day is a school day and st- still summer holidays for people that are at school. We can, we can always learn. Um, on to kind of a bit more of less serious rugby stuff, but, but back onto the, the rugby stuff. Um, I hope uh, Richard is related to Russell Crowe, um, but Richard Crowe has um, sent a question. Hopefully you're entertained as well, um, Richard. Mm. Um, um, but I guess it's an interesting one that um, you kind of hear a lot about with all sport and, and the way that the, the seasons have kind of all been postponed and kind of coming back at different times and that's then affecting layoff times. So are you guys as players worried about the length of this season, but then how that's going to impact on on next season in terms of the, the physical side of things? Is that something that enters into your mind as, as, as players at all? Um, Caden, I'll come to you first on that one, if that's all right. Um, I think it's always in the back of your mind, but I think you try and take every like few games as they come. So we're only focusing on the next few games in our um, that we're playing. So we don't really tend to think about the long season ahead. I, we try and focus on, like I said, the games coming up and, yeah, it's going to be long, but I think it's going to be enjoyable. I think 
we've really gelled as a squad since we've come back in and we're really looking forward to finishing this season and starting the next and really putting Quinns back where they belong at the top of the table. Yeah. No, nice. And, and similar, similar for you, James, or kind of different thoughts for you in terms of the, the length of this season going into next? Mate, uh, to be, if I'm really honest, like, yes, I am a little bit nervous about it. It's not something, like Caden said, it's not something you think about every day and worry about, but you know, you know what's coming and you, you, now everyone feels great and everyone's fit, energised and so on. But you know how dark it can get um, if you're sore and you've lost and so on. Um, and if it, it just seems, if it could, if it could seem never ending, that could be dangerous. But in saying that, there is guaranteed time off. There is um, windows of time off in the season, and even in this one, there's weekends off at some point. I think. Um, so they're going to try and look after us, and with I don't know how many people have seen the sort of policy and rules on. You know, there's only so many minutes you can play, and if you play in. You can play in six of the seven or, or, you know, there's there's things to protect us, which is great. And we just, as players, always ask for that because you're always going to put your hand up and be like, I want to play. Um, if I'm fit, I'm going out there. So you just need you just need that sort of transparency with the powers to be to look after you sometimes. Um, but like Caden said, I think everyone's really energised for this block and this season. Um, and it's, it, it will cross that bridge when we come to it. And we've got a great squad, so changing changing boys and resting lads shouldn't be an issue, which is also great. I think it's interesting that you say that. Like no player, and you've spoken to, to plenty of plenty of the boys in, in even in my time at, at Quinns, and no player ever wants to put their hand up and go, "Oh, I'd like to have a rest this week," because you want to be out there and play when you're fit. So actually, it's about having those checks and balances in place to not protect you from yourselves, but but to actually kind of say knowing that you've got the trust in the organisation that you are going to get protected, I guess, is, is quite important for, for you guys. And, and Steph, for you, first season in the Premiership, um, for us over in this country, we always think that, that our leagues are the best because, well, objectively they are. Um, <laughs> um, but, but an interesting or a different set of challenges coming over here. How have you found it physically um, and mentally as well, I guess, adjusting to, to the game over here? And, and does that thought of having a, a long season going into another long season kind of enter into your mind at all, uh, going into your kind of first and second seasons in the front? Yeah, maybe start with your last point and connecting it with the previous question. I think your squad's really important in this competition and going into so this season, going into your long season, the next season. I think a squad would be or is going to be really important, rotation, all that, how we manage our squad. Um, so I think that's going to be massively important. And I think we have a really good squad now. So, yeah, I think we, we're in good nick going forward. Um, how the competitions compared, it, it is quite different, to be honest. Um, I think the thing I like about the pre, or the Premier is every week's really competitive. There's no easy games. You can't switch off in one game because every game... The teams are so close. Even if you look at the log, like I think nine or ten, like number yeah. ten on the log, can still make a um, semi-final. So that that shows it's a good, a healthy comp uh, competition we're playing in. Compared to Super Rugby, it's a bit of a different competition. It's a bit more open. Obviously, we play more in summer, so there's a bit more skill involved. Um, yeah, if you ask March, I think both is enjoyable. It's different games, but yeah. You'd like both. And I think the thing I like most about the Prem is the crowds, by far. It's hard to play in, a, in, or play in front of full crowds every weekend. We're in Super Rugby, got a bit watered down because there's so, much, so many rugby. And some games, you, you know, that other, like the Crusaders play uh, a week Australia, a week South African side, they're going to smash them. You don't see that in the Prem. Every game is like on the edge of your seat, what's going to happen. No, I think that's what's um, that's certainly what makes it exciting from a fan point of view that that, that it is so tight, but also from a, a Quinn's point of view that I think you know we had a, a tricky time um, pre lockdown or a mixed time. I think it's probably the, be the better way to put it put it with the injuries and everything we had, but actually it's still all to play for, kind of coming into these these final few weeks and 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 that there's not just the the Premiership Cup final, um, you know, there's a chance of silverware um, for for the first time in a while for the club, which is. Is super exciting, but actually, the, as you say, even anyone from tenth can still qualify for the the semi final. So it's kind of all 
all up for grabs. Um, look, I mentioned I mentioned him earlier, and I think now's a good time to kind of come on to it. Uh, this week saw some some really sad news um, coming out of the club that, uh, that Jack Clifford um, had to announce his retirement um, due to injury. Um, aged only twenty seven, which is is mad to think of having to have your your career taken away from you at, at age twenty seven. There's a few different questions that have been sent in that we'll come on to, but but Chiz, if I can come to you kind of first on that, just to I guess just say some words about what he's like as a as a bloke as as a player but but as a man and kind of how he conducted himself in his time at the club and and to kind of manage the, the pressure of having to tell you guys that that his he was having to talk cool time on his career yeah i think he he, he when he spoke he spoke really well the other day because obviously it's very emotional um and i've seen a few it's, it's so sad like i've seen a few guys get up in front of the group now and announce it before their time and it's such a it's such a shame um He's such a talented guy, had a massive career ahead of him, has dealt with so, so much um, injury-wise. And you can only think what that is like mentally when he goes home. Um, but, you know, he, he's, he's, he's plugged on and he tried to get back from this one, having been told it wasn't looking good and, and tried to keep going. Even through lockdown, he, he was desperate for physio, really, and, and did it on his own at home, what he could. Um, incredibly professional guy who's tried to get his head down and get back, um, who was a fantastic talent. It's such, like I said, it's such a shame. It's such a big loss for the, for the club. And, you know, think, thinking about it, it's, I, I, I've never really played with Cliff that much. We've never really put games together, which is such a, a sad thing to say about someone who's so talented because you want to play, like I said, you want to play against and with the best players that you can. Um, and I think he could have done a lot more in a Quinn shirt. Um, I think it's great. He's, but I watched his video and, and the tributes yeah. from the guys and it was emotional stuff. And I think it, I'm really pleased he's got, you know, the caps and the Six Nations to hold on to. Because I think, you know, you don't want to finish your career and, and not have something to look back on in terms of trophy or achievement. You know, 100 caps for the club, 10 caps for England and a Six Nations medal is not bad to look back on for you know, thirty-five year old, let alone a twenty-seven year old. No, I think that's a really interesting point. It kind of it puts it into to context as well. And this sport is is one where it's actually the almost the rarity that players get to choose their time of retirement it is often because of the nature of the sport. It's often kind of um, put on you. And look, Caden, I'll, I'll come to you. Hopefully, you're a very long way off for, of that decision. But uh, an interesting question that's um, that's been sent in from from Terry, which I think is, is is a nice one to kind of ask and put it to you as one of the younger guys coming through. What help or advice do you get from from Quins, whether or the RFU or the RPA or any other organisations? I know that we've got someone like, in Andy Sanger at the club that's yeah. um, that's that's really key with that with with, with the boys. Um, good just to kind of maybe kind of educate the, some of the guys on the call as to kind of what his role is at the club uh, in all of that. So he's in charge of player welfare so he really helps like develop you off pitch and help you for for some of the older boys it's life after rugby for younger boys like me it's helping me get qualifications to then so obviously I'm young I'm not really thinking about what I'm going to be doing in 10-15 years times I'm trying to focus on what I'm doing now and just enjoy my rugby but he really puts a different uh, aspect of things so brings up the likes of Cliff and it can happen it can really happen. We've seen it twice now with Crumps and Cliff this season. So he doesn't shock us, but he really helps to guide us into thinking that way and to get qualifications behind us, whether that's educational, whether that's coaching, whether that's any, anything along those lines, just to have something to always fall back on. No, that's, it's important as well for... Yeah, for all you guys, to, and you know, rugby is, is as yet not one, of the, not one of the sports where you can play it for 10 years and then you know, retire and, 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 and that be that. So important to kind of think about life outside of that. And, and Steph, you were talking about that earlier in terms of thinking about life outside of rugby. Again, not wishing retirement on, on anybody, but, but talking about, about, about yourself, kind of what's, what's your plan for, for the future? Have you got kind of a few irons in the fire, as it were? Yeah, so we have, obviously I mentioned we have a farm back home, so probably be a bit involved in the farming, but I'm really passionate about a game I enjoy I enjoy the technical side of the game, so I would love to go into coaching. So I, yeah, I need to do my le coaching levels. Um, that's my goal to to go to level two and level three. So when I'm finished with rugby, I can go into coaching. Probably try and go into coaching with a bit of the younger guys. I always feel 
if you coach at a younger level, you can still mean a lot for people on, not on rugby, but off, off the pitch, um, guide them in the right, right direction, give them advice that I've seen a lot of people didn't have growing up. Um, prob- that especially in South Africa, you, it's obviously a, quite a diverse country with a lot of challenges, but people that probably come from a disadvantaged home, try and help where you can and make a difference that way. So that's something I'm passionate about and probably try and go into that direction. Nice. No, cool. And, and, and James, kind of coming back on, on Cliff, I've seen someone, clearly a stat fan, uh, Jane. Uh, you've absolutely smashed it. And that's, mm. I'm annoyed. I'm, I'm happy for you, Jane, but I'm annoyed because I had prepared the stat in advance, but, but you're beating me to it. Um, and it's, it's a great stat. Only England player ever to get to double figures in caps and have a 100% win record is one of those things that actually you look back at, as, as you said, you know, talking about Six Nations medal, 100 appearances for Quinns, like that is absolutely sensational when you look at the, at the talent um, that he had. And, you know, the back row at Quinns has always been one that's been in, in good hands over the years. And, you know, in, in you, um, cheers, you've got another one and there's another guy, Alex Don Brandt, who's doing all right um, as well. He seems like he could have a good career ahead of him. Um, that's my hot tip for anyone uh, watching Quinns uh, in the future. Um, but obviously with Cliff sadly having to retire, we know that Chris Robshaw is moving on um, at the end of um, this season uh, as well, just moves on an absolute legend, not just of Quinns, but of, of rugby in general. This is an interesting one, again from Jane, um, our, our stat fan here. Who's on your wish list as a replacement, aside from James Chisholm starting every game? Yeah. Um, to be <laughs> honest, I did see this question, and to be honest, the thing came straight to my head is that we don't, we don't need one. I think Guzzy was, you know, I don't know what him and Robbo spoke about year, a year or so ago, but for, foreseen this coming and signed the likes of Will Evans and Tom Laude and um, re-signed Archie White. And those guys, I think, are going to play an awful lot. And they've, they're, they, they're young and they're not your internationals, but they're really good players. They're really, really good premiership players. And they were both unlucky not to play more for their prior respective clubs um you know Webb featured for a whole season one year and then was sort of pushed aside and Lorde didn't didn't feature nearly as enough for Exeter as he should have done so both great players if I had to choose an, an English guy in the premiership I'd probably um if if I had to uh, I'd probably go for Jack Willis I think he's impressed me a lot over the last few years he's a great guy he'd be a good guy to have around um and on the international scene, I don't, I don't really know to be honest, but that would be, that would be my pick, if I had to. No. Nice. Well, it t- sounds like if you had to, you're picking James Chisholm and um, and his band of merry men, the guys that are already at, at the club. And it's an interesting exactly. one, like especially with the uh, with the, the, the breakdown um, laws changing. It's someone like Will Evans actually is a natural. Yeah. Just I remember his first game for us when he. Um, he kept, he started it and just was over the ball every single time. Like for a, for a small a smallish guy in, in inverted commas, which is rich coming from me, I know. Um, like he's he's a real talent, and, and kind of these new laws seem to to suit his style of play moving forward. That be yeah, fair? I think it's good. I think it will bode really really well for him. And he's kind of that old school, the, the old cliche. Like he is that fetcher, um, but he's also got incredible stopping power. He's an amazing tackler. But for a small guy, he's he's very very powerful. And I think what is important, and he won't mind me saying this, he knows what he's good at. He knows he's not a good carrier. He knows he's not good at some stuff. So he sticks to his job, which is really important when it comes to rugby. Um, I think people get carried away with everyone needs to carry and be able to pass and stuff. They don't. You need some guys to do dirty work and you need guys like him to fulfill their X factor and just get over the ball as much as they can and make big tackles. So he's a good guy to have around. He's a good guy to play with. Excellent. Uh, look, I think we're getting close to, to nine o'clock, um, which is, is my bedtime. Um, so that is when we do have to, it's a hard stop, unfortunately, because um, uh, otherwise I'll be cranky tomorrow and my wife doesn't need that. Um, but there are three, I think, if I count them correctly, three excellent questions that I think um, are good to kind of start to, to tie up on a bit of quick fire, not too quick fire, but a bit of quick fire for the three of you. We'll go, the, f- the first one we'll go with would be a sporting one. And then the other two are a bit, a bit more left field. So we'll start with, with each of you. Um, did you have a sporting island? Stefan, I'll come to you first on this one because yours will be interesting as someone um, not, from, not from the UK, it's a different frame of reference. Did you have kind of a, a sporting or, or a rugby idol growing up and, and who was it? 
Yeah, I've loads of sporting idols. I actually spoke about it the other day, and I think as I've gone through life, it changed a little bit. But Roger Federer has always been a one that stuck out for me from a different sport. It's just been classed the way he handles himself. Yeah, he's he's the goat for me. So he's class. And then rugby, um, always loved Franz Stein um, from a young age. The way he kicked the ball 60, 70 meters, the way he could change the game. And I reckon that you can play from one to 50 in France, you can play. Uh, probably not hooker, but yeah, the rest, you probably can play that position. And then being a lock, Victor Matfield. So yeah, that's a three for me. Nice. A, a pretty formidable three um, as well. Caden, what about you? Um, I think in general, I think mine would probably be Usain Bolt. I think when he was at his prime, that was when I can first remember watching the Olympics and watching him dominate it for so many years was, yeah, you know, he'd be my sport and I'd own rugby. Um, I'd probably go Jason Robinson, the way he was just completely different, his footwork, his speed. He completely changed the way a winger could be. You look at the likes of Cheslin Colby now, like you don't have to be big, you don't have to be the biggest bloke on the pitch if you're quick and got feet. So yeah, I'd say they're my main two. Nice. Uh, Cheers, what about you? Yeah, mine growing up was Lawrence Delalio. When we watched rugby, I loved watching him. Um, and his, like, off-the-field stuff as well. When you were kids, you just watch YouTube and watch him do speeches and stuff. He was obviously very, very driven and ambitious, as well as being a good player. Um, but, like, like, I don't have a, an idol in another sport, but there's lots of us out there that love watching sport. Um, I can't really think of anyone that comes off the top of my head, but truly being Stokes. Yeah, Stokes <laughs> is the goat, isn't he? <laughs> but, yeah, for every Ben Stokes, there's a Jack Leach. So it's so true. Yeah. It's so true. Uh, I, I think I'm squarely in the Jack Leach camp, but hey, he's still a winner. Uh, <laughs> um, and then two other ones were completely left field away from rugby. Uh, Terry sent another one in, which I quite like. Um, I don't know if you guys are, are car nuts, whether you guys have cars um if if you've got any nice ones please do let us know but what's your what's your dream car terry wants to know what, what what's your what's your dream car so steph i'll come back to you back to you first i guess on the farm aside from a tractor what's your dream car i'm not big into cars at all but um excellent i can, I can appreciate a, a nice car i think uh if i for, yeah i'll i'll have a maybach and someone driving me around that'll be class i like <laughs> that 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 i like a lot Go no for comfort. <laughs> Always. Uh, Caden, what about you? Um, I think mine would be probably be a Mercedes G-Wagon. They just look so cool and the shape and size. Yeah, I can see myself in one of them. Suit you, mate. It, it would really suit you. Thanks, James. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> and, what, and what about you, Chiz? Yeah, I, I'm not a massive car guy, but I'd love to have a pickup truck. Mm, yeah, I'd love to have just a massive, intimidating pickup truck that I couldn't park. Good God. Excellent. <laughs> well, I think what's nice about that is uh, Terry. I don't think that either of, or any of those were the answers you were looking for. Um, clearly, we've we've not got uh, any of the new hosts of Top Gear on this call, so uh, they rotate that pretty regularly. But I think we can count all of you guys um, out. And then the last one um, that we'll go to before wrapping up on, um, on on rugby and kind of bring it back to Quinns. This one I'm genuinely interested in. Um, what is the best box set or podcast that you've watched or, or binged in, in lockdown? Um, we'll, do, we'll do the same order. So, Steph, I'll come to you first. Um, and you know what? I'm going to add an extra bit onto there. I want to know also what the trashiest box set is that you've gone for in lockdown. I don't, I don't want everyone being like, oh, this really cerebral true crime documentary. Yeah, sure. But come on, you watched Selling Sunset and you did all three series of that <laughs> LA Estate Agency. <laughs> and you were absolutely obsessed with the 80, the whatever it was, the 80 million pound house that Davina was trying to sell. She's never going to sell it to me. What are you talking about? <laughs> uh, <laughs> Steph, I'll come to you first. Um, well, I, I, I probably read a bit more books than I watch TV. Um, I read a book, It Takes What It Takes, which was class. It's about the way of thinking about football players and big organizations. Then I think The Last Dance, Michael Jordan, sick. Yeah. Um, the worst thing I probably watched was Love Island Australia. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, That's but I good. couldn't That's... stop watching. I still, I still watch. Now you can't. I don't know how that program does it. You, you watch it, you're like, this is awful, and then you find yourself a week later being like, cancelling other plans because you know it's on at nine o'clock, and you're like, "That's it." I literally can't speak to anybody. Um, Caden, what about you? 
Um, yeah, last answer, one of mine, Ozark. Really enjoyed Ozark yes. on Netflix. Really good series. Um, podcast, Peter Crouch's one. That's a good laugh. Really enjoyed that. The trashiest thing was that Too Hot to Handle, the kind of rip-off Love oh, Island. Yeah, that was bad. Watched that <laughs> and got quite addicted to that. Yeah, so that was definitely the trashiest thing I watched. <laughs> nice. And, and Chiz, what about you? Yeah, same as Steph. I didn't. I, I, I listened to a lot of books. It was really... You know, that was really good for me. A lot of uh, like Navy SEAL stuff, which I find absolutely fascinating. Um, the, the trashiest and best was Tiger King. <laughs> so, so good. Literally, we, we watched one and we, were, we literally did it in a day. Um, yeah, and I, same. I, is, is, how was the end of every episode? Like a totally different story. I don't know how they did it. It's it was crazy. Like... It went from kind of animal welfare to an absolute lunatic trying to kill someone. <laughs> My which... kind of series. Yeah, as a story arc, for me, that's what The Last Dance was missing. There were no yeah. animals, there were no tigers in that. <laughs> yeah. uh, really, really disappointed. Um, look, guys, thank you so much um, for, for this evening. It's been be a great laugh uh, for me. Hopefully you guys have in, enjoyed it as well. We covered, covered some ground here for sure. Uh, I can't leave a chat with three Quinns players on Tiger King, though, however. So just very, very quickly, um, it's a big game this weekend. Away at Saracens. I couldn't have the three of you here and not push you for a score prediction um, each. So, uh, who should we go with? Caden, I'll come to you first. Quinns by how many? Quinns by, it's going to be high scoring. It's going to be qu Quinns by eight. No bonus. Ooh, how, how high scoring are we talking, though? What do you reckon? It's, it's dry. It's quick pitch. Um, 30s, I reckon. I reckon 38, 30. Oh. What a game. What a game. Well, make sure you're all watching for that one. Uh, cheers, what about you? Oh, I was going to go a bit lower. I'm going to go 22-20. Tight one. It's a forward versus a back there on score predictions. Yeah. I like that. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and Steph, Steph, what about you? Tight one, 20 squints by three. Nice. Excellent. Well, at least we're winning uh, in all those predictions, so uh, I can relax for the rest of the week. Guys, thank you so much for giving up your time this evening. Really, really Welcome. enjoyable. Um, keep your eyes out for those brownies. We've got it in writing that they are coming, yeah. so yeah. That, that'll be being checked. Um, guys, enjoy the rest of your evening, and, uh, and thank you again on behalf of the Harlequins Foundation um, for all of your generous donations over the course of lockdown and to help support the, the, the club and the foundation and the great work that they're doing. See you later, guys. Thank you very much, guys. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank <laughs> you.